So hi, it's John Reed. I'm back with uh, Matt Stanish again. Uh, this time we're off camera with ID Interact. How are you doing? Doing well. So we're going to do a little bit of product demo here. So why don't you show us a few screens and walk us through what you got here? Sure, sure. This is our dashboard. Again, it's enterprise focused. So this is the view that uh, uh, a marketing executive might look at. Uh, what you do here is you're able to kind of configure your filter configurations here on the left hand side. And again, this is all about being able to find demand signals and then how to create personas in real time. So let's go ahead and see that. So here we're able to see a little bit about Matt individually. We are able to understand his privacy level, levels that you can see on the bottom, the bottom right hand side. We're able to see Facebook, tweet posts, uh, the most recent ones that apply to Wired Magazine. We're able to see what type of apps that he's downloaded that are part of Condé Nast overall and Wired Magazine as well as GQ. And then we're able to see a lot of analytics about Matt, where he lives, um, how many tweets, what his entire audience size is. And then if we need to, they can, we can send him a message individually. So if Matt read an article in Wired that really pissed him off, that which, and he had done it that day, yeah. and posted a tweet, you would see that. Right. Right there on the right. You, you or, or if he saw something really cool that excited him about something he read in Wired, he would post that as well. That's exactly right. Gotcha. And Wired Magazine, if he was talking about a Cadillac, um, certainly could go ahead and share that with their advertiser as well for additional analytics. Gotcha. And, and, and to what extent is, is he opted into that to an extent, like that's all got sorted? So Yeah, it's, it's opted in, um, okay. a big part of our platform. Uh, oh, cool. respects people's privacy. Um, so what we do is we um, authenticate against the OAuth 2.0 protocols and we're only able to show what that protocol gives us through the social channels. Which makes a lot of sense to me because I don't really like spam, but I actually don't mind when I get targeted stuff that really resonates with my interests. Very different. Especially if it's relevant and it's geographical, right? Exactly, yeah. So show us a little more. We're also to, able to look at entire market segments. So, for example, if, um, if a certain topic was resonating, what you could go do is search by market segment and find, for example, here that 12,427 people are interested in a similar topic um, or maybe talking about a certain article. You can see, obviously, here where they are, uh, where they're located across the country. You could see a little bit of analytics about them, demographics, market segmentation, um, as well as gender and then choose, depending upon what the topic is, to send all 12,000 people a particular message that might be very relevant for them. And these numbers are all real-time updated as well? These numbers are yeah. all real-time, depending upon how quickly that protocol from Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus can right. get back to us. can get back, right. And, and so you might click on one based on region or interest or... It, exactly you. right. Okay. You can segment or filter by interest. You can filter or segment um, based upon if um, your customer is wired or GQ in this instance, and based upon their propensity to buy or maybe even their viral score. And we, we, one of the things that we do within SAP HANA is we um, calculate people's viral score very differently than a cloud score. Everything's very focused on whether or not that user has a propensity to buy your product or solution you're selling. Another area that's very interesting is this is our Manage Offers campaign page where um, in, in my previous life, we always wanted to segment finding your most loyal customers, being able to reduce churn if you're in the subscription business, right? And being able to entice future customers or being able to engage current subscribers of yours. You know, how do you differentiate based upon that user, that segment, whether they're loyal, whether they might be new to your brand, and then how do you entice them into your brand or to reduce churn or to send them different and very relevant offers? And this is the way that we do that by empowering and using persona, and then we're able to segment that um, to a larger population. And what good would a visual BI tool be without a lot of visual BI analytics? Yeah. So here we're able to track um, our four social media um, different channels. We're able to look at uh, interactions in aggregate. Um, we're able to look at total interactions daily by gender, um, by gender type, as well as by what we call emotion, which is not sentiment, by the way. Um, we're able to look at emotion pretty deeply based upon what they say and based upon those verbs, adverbs, or adjectives, and how highly correlated those are to 
converting into revenue, essentially. One of the things that occurs to me as I look at that is that it, it's sort of a shift for thinking about marketing because a lot of times you launch a campaign and you sort of see it through. This implies almost an agile marketing where you might start but make course corrections throughout based on the, that, the analytics that you're seeing. That's exactly right. I think, you know, certainly a lot of advertisers in Condé Nast and Wired Magazine, um, a, a brand like Cadillac, for instance, might believe that their customer market segment is very different than what they're actually seeing in the analytics, right? And how people are sharing, how people are, are looking at maybe an article that on Cadillac through Wired Magazine, how they're sharing that information. And being able to segment that in real time could be very powerful for Cadillac or their PR firm. Well, great, thanks for the tour, appreciate it. My pleasure.